A Village on the Road by Sacristan In a land far away, once upon a time, there was great poverty. Only the rich could manage without great problems. Three of those rich men and their servants were traveling on the same road in a convoy when they came to a very poor village. Seeing this poverty provoked different reactions in all three rich men. The first couldn't stand the seat, so he took all the gold and the jewels from his wagons and shared them out among the villagers. He wished them all the best of luck and he left. The second rich man, seeing the desperate situation, stopped for a short time and gave the villagers all his food and drink, since he could see that money would be of a little use to them. He made sure that each villager received their fair share and would that enough food last for some time. Then he left. The third rich man, on seeing such poverty, sped up and started straight through the village without stopping. The two other rich men saw this from a distance and commented with each other how the third rich man lacked decency and compassion. It was good that they had been there to help the poor villagers. However, three days later, they met the third rich man who was traveling in the opposite direction. He was still traveling quickly, but his wagons, instead of the gold and valuables they had been carrying, were now full of farming implements, tools and sacks of seeds and grain. He was heading to the poor village to help them out of power. This happened a long, long time ago, but we can see the very same thing happening today too. There are some generous people who give only so that people can see how much they are giving. They don't want to know anything about the people they are giving to. Other generous people really try to help others, but only so that they can feel better about themselves. But there are other generous people, the best kind. To them, it doesn't matter what the other kind of generous people think of them, nor do they give in a showy way. Instead, they truly worry about how best to improve the lives, the lives of those they are helping. They give greatly of something much more valuable than money. They give their time, their vision, and their lives. We still have time to change to this third and the best group. The best kindness is to give our time and the sincere best wishes to people, regardless of the whether they can give us anything in return. The Selfish Giant by Oscar Wilde Every afternoon, the children play in the giant's garden. It is a big, lovely garden with green grass. Beautiful flowers grow there. There are 12 peach trees with delicate pink blossoms. The birds sit on the trees and sing sweet songs. The children listen to the birds. Oh, happy we are here. The children say, the giant is away. He is visiting his friends, the ogre. After seven years, the giant returns home. When he arrives, he sees the children in his garden. They are playing. What are you doing here? He says in a loud voice. The children are very scared and run away. This is my garden, my garden, says the giant. Only I can play here. So the giant builds a high wall around the garden. Then he puts up a sign. No one must enter. He is a very selfish giant. Now the poor children have no place to play. They can't play on the road. There are big stones and, uh, on the road and the children don't like them. After school, the children walk near the high wall. They talk about the beautiful garden inside. It is spring and there are little blossoms and little birds everywhere. But in the garden of the selfish giant, it is still winter. The birds do not sing there because there are no children. There are no blossoms on a beautiful foot of the grass. It looks for the children. It sees the sign and goes back into the ground. It goes to sleep. Only the snow and the frost are happy. Spring doesn't come to this garden. 
They say, We can live here all year. The snow covers the grass with her big white clock. The frost paints the trees silver. The snow and the frost invite the north wind to stay with them. The north wind comes and blows all day in the garden. He has a big warm coat and a hat. This is a wonderful place, says the north wind. We must invite the ale. So the hail comes. He is dressed in grey. For three days he runs around the garden. Then he dances on the roof. There is a lot of hail. Why doesn't the spring come? Asks the selfish giant. He sits at the window and looks at this at his cold white garden. The spring never comes, and the summer never comes. The autumn gives fruit to all gardens, but it doesn't give any fruit to the selfish giant's garden. He is too selfish. The autumn says, so it is always winter there. The north wind, the air, the frost and the snow live in the selfish giant's garden. One morning, the giants hear some lovely music. I must be the king's musician, says the giant. A little bird is singing a lovely song. The ail stops dancing on the roof. The north wind stops blowing. There is a sweet perfume in the air. I think spring is here at last, says the giant. He goes outside the window and looks outside. What does he see? He sees something wonderful. There is a little hole in the wall. Now the children can enter the garden. There is a little child on every tree. The trees have beautiful blossoms. They are very happy to have the children. The birds are flying in the sky and singing. The flowers are laughing. There is happiness in the garden. But it is still winter in one corner of the garden. In that corner, there is a little boy. He is very small and he can't climb the tree. He is walking around the tree and crying. The tree is covered with snow. The north wind is blowing. Climb up, little boy, says the tree. But the boy is too small. When he sees the little boy, the giant's heart melts. I am very selfish, he says. Now I know why the spring does not come here. I must put the little boy on the tree. Then I must knock down the wall. My garden must be the children's playground forever. The giant opens his doors and goes out into the garden. When the children see the giant, they are afraid. They run away. The winter returns to the garden. The little boy does not run away. He is crying. The giant takes him in his big hands and puts him on a branch of the tree. Suddenly, there are blossoms on the tree. The birds come and sing. The little boy is very happy. He kisses the giant. When the children see this, they come back to the garden. The spring comes back too. It's your garden now, little children, says the giant. He takes a big axe and knocks down the wall. At 12 o'clock, people go to the market. They see the giant playing with the children in the beautiful garden. The children play all day. In the evening, they say goodbye to the giant. Where is the little boy? Asks the giant. We don't know, answer the children. You must tell him to come tomorrow, says the giant. We don't know where are live say the children. The giant is very sad and says, He is my little friend and I want to see him. Every afternoon after school, the children play with the giant. The giant is very kind to the children, but he wants to see his first little friend. Where is he? He says to himself. Many years pass and the giant grows old. He can play with the children. So he sits in an enormous armchair and watches the children play. He looks at his garden and says, 
I had many beautiful flowers, but the children are the most beautiful flowers of all. One winter morning, the giant looks out of his window. He does take the winter now. He knows that the spring is sleeping and that the flowers are resting. Sadly, he sees something marvelous. He looks and looks. He is very surprised. In a corner of the garden, there is a tree with lovely with black, white blossoms. Its branches are golden and um, there is silver fruit on them. Under this, uh, this tree, there is a little boy. It is the giant's little friend. The giant runs to the garden. He is very happy. He runs across the green grass and goes to the child. When he is near the child, he becomes angry. He says, What are these wounds? There are the marks of two nails on the child's hands and feet. What are these wounds? Says the giant. These are the wounds of love. Says the child. Who are you? Asks the giant. The giant has a strange sensation. He kneels in front of the little child. The child smiles at the giant and says, You let me play in your garden. Today you can come with me to my garden. It is paradise. When the children come to the garden, they find the giant dead under a tree. Is covered with white blossoms.